All right, today we're going to look at an issue that has been caused by our constant obsession with stewardship. <laughs> we have been obsessed with stewardship so much that we've caused ourselves just a teensy problem. And the problem is, is what happens when our holdings collapse? And you ask yourself, how could our holdings collapse, right? That's not gonna happen. It's not like you just lose stewardship. Ah, but you do. As soon as you die, you lose stewardship. Now let's jump in. Okay, so as soon as you die, let's take a look at our ruler. We have 42 stewardship. So that's pumping us plus our innovations to an amazing 16 max holdings. Awesome, not quite probably max, but we could get a, a teensy better. Uh, always have to improve, right? Well, what's our son have? Our son has 14. Now that's solid. Now, depending on his education, he may get up to 22 and then he'll have like holy sites and then his wife probably be around 30. He's still a couple sh holding short of that amazing 16. He'll probably end up around 13 holdings. Alas, what do we do? We'll be two holdings over our cap. And you know me, I'm building that 16th holding right now. So what do we do? Well, we have two strategies we can do. One is not ideal, but if the second strategy doesn't work, it's definitely an option. And what we would do is we would marry our son off before we die. And we would do that immediately. And as soon as we marry him off, he's going to start ha wanting to have kids with his uh, with his wife. So him and his wife have a couple kids and he has the primary heir. What you'll do is you'll go in and you'll give that primary heir a holding. So it's not going to say primary heir. Uh, that would be a bad holding. Giving him a, a duchy isn't ideal. But let's say that we go and we give him a this, this county right here, right? We can give him this county and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. And it, he's not gonna have a primary heir here. It's just going to be whatever your first uh, gender preference is going to be. So either his first daughter or his first uh, son. Now this has a bit of issues if you go do this. And the reason why is that he's susceptible to, to tyranny. He is susceptible to be deposed because of that tyranny. And he is susceptible to being uh, having other people attack him and take his territory so you have to micromanage him at that point okay so that's not ideal what else can we do what better strategy can we do okay so the strategy that we are going to do is we are going to abuse barons so when you look at most counties, they're not going to be like this nice, sexy county right here with five holdings. This is just awesome. Uh, this is one of the better ones. Not the best. There are six out there. But yeah, so five is definitely a solid amount of holdings that you have. And as you can see, you need at least in every single holding uh, before you build another castle, you need at least one castle, one town and one temple. Cool. Uh, so we build that. So, you, so anything after that's gravy and you start building castles. Then what you can do is you can just click this magical button of Grant to Noble Lord. And then all of a sudden we have 14 holdings. That's awesome, right? Now at 14 out of 16. Now if our son took over and we had 13, then he would be only one away from finally appeasing his court that he's not over the max holdings. He's not going to have any reduced taxes and he's not going to have any reduced levies. And then what we would do is as soon as we get our max holdings up to 14, right? Because we're going to work hard at it. Our heir is going to work as hard as he can to get his max holdings up. Okay, so we're going to do that. He gets his holdings up. How do we get this title back? Right, with the county, you can't just revoke it, right? When, when we gave it to our heir, we can't just revoke it without incurring tyranny, without uh, potentially going to a war. They have a chance to accept it. What if I told you that there was a way to revoke a title and they couldn't do anything about it and no one cares? Well, that's where barons come in. So you're going to go in and you're going to revoke title. You're going to click on it. Revoking baronies does not include tyranny. Huzzah! We beat the system. Now he's not going to like us. He's going to leave our court. Whatever. One less courtier, not that big of a deal. And you know what? When you grant a noble lord, it's not even guaranteed to be a... Um, 
it's not even going guaranteed to be a noble lord uh, from your court. It could be a noble lord from another court. It's going to prioritize the religion and culture of that of that uh, holding, which probably is yours. But we're going to revoke him, and then boom, we have it back. We're back up to 15 holdings. We have this sexy, sexy castle back with the elephant trees and making all this gold. But if you had noticed, let's let's grant it, it back. Oh, well, it proves my point. So usually when you go through and you revoke a title, let me just revoke again. Okay, uh, it's probably not going to happen here, but you're going to get a revoke my title minus 80% there. But there's also something else that happens is that that was unusual what happened there. Usually it goes to the same person. And here's that person right there in my rivals because this has not been the first time that I granted him this parody. The reason why it hasn't been this first time is because I've recorded this three times already. Actually, two times. No, no, three times. Yeah, three times. I've recorded this three times. Well, I recorded it twice. They didn't go well. And then the third time, I guess I had forgot to hit the record button. That one was going really well. <laughs> Okay, so this is it, this illustrates exactly why I kind of glad that I messed up because this illustrates exactly what the problem is because it's going to that same noble lord over and over again. We have generated ourselves a rival. And of course, having yourself a rival who is a uh, vassal is very dangerous or in your court is very dangerous. You want to get rid of them. If you have rivals in your court or your uh, in your vassal in your realm, just tell them to go away. <laughs> Get rid of them so they're, they're not powerful. So what you would want to do in that case is you would want to go and say, go down to the second hold castle in here and grant that to another noble lord. But we can actually abuse, and this doesn't have to do with secession, but let's say that we want to prepare our next holding, and we're at 15 out of 15 rather than 15 out of 16, right? Our stewardship isn't quite as good. Well, if we come over here, I actually have a holding that's just like that. And I have four holdings here. Now, if I was at 15 out of 15, I'm currently had just built a, a city there. And I need, I'm currently building a temple right there. And then after this, I'll build a castle right here. Now, if I'm at 15 out of 15, I don't have to stop building this castle. What I can do is I can grant it to a baron and start building up that holding for that Baron, he thinks we're doing glorious things for him. And of course, what we're really doing is we're building it up for ourselves because the second we get to that 16 out, the extra capacity to have that extra holding, we are going to take that holding back and we are going to reap all the benefits for all of our hard work right away. So it, that is a situation where you can plan for the future. So definitely, when you're in here and you are uh, playing uh, Crusader Kings 3, make sure to abuse your barons. Make sure that you are abusing their status and you are only having them as vassals and barons when it is advantageous to you. That is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have not seen my night strategy, I just released a new night strategy where we got over, we calculated that we could conservatively get well over 108 nights in this game. It was absolutely ridiculous. So definitely check out the video. I'll link it right here. And I will leave you there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please hit that like button. Give it a good old smash. And also, if you haven't subscribed and you're at this point of this video, why haven't you hit that subscribe button as well? Smash it as well. And of course, feel free to leave a comment. But I will see you next time with another CK3 tutorial, and I might have another video coming out soon. That's not exactly CK3, but I will see you guys later. You have yourself a good day, good night, or good morning wherever you are.